Are you ready now? Please, in this house, we stand to honor God's word. And we read the scripture with power from our system. Is somebody here now? Verse Kings 18 and verse number 1. We're going to skip from verse number 1 all the way to verse 41. Are you here? In verse number 1, it says, And it came to pass, after many days, the word of the Lord came unto Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself to Ahab. I will send rain upon the earth. Somebody say it is raining. Fast forward to verse number 41. <clears throat> And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I wish I heard the shout. Look at 42. And Elijah went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah and Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Camel and cast himself down to the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up! Ah, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. In verse 44, it came to pass. At the seventh time, he said, Behold, there are risen a little cloud uh, out of the sea like a man's hand and he said go up say unto Ahab prepare thy chariot get thee down that the rain stop thee not in verse 45 he says it came to pass that in the meanwhile the heavens were black and the cloud and the wind and there was rain hey Ahab rode and went to Jezreel 46. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. He grabbed his lions and he ran before Ahab into Jezreel. Father, we thank you. The hour has come. Lord, in this house, draw your weight around. Show the devil who is boss. Anoint the tongue of your servant. Let it be like the pen of the red writer. Open the ears and the mind of your people to receive the word of God and the people say, I was praying this week and the Lord said to me, go and tell the people, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. that after many days the Lord said to Elijah go and show yourself to Ahab I'm going to send rain upon the earth ladies and gentlemen for many years as a matter of fact three and a half years there was no rain or dew in the land of Israel the land was dry the place was buried there was no testimony they were dying of thirst the animals were dying because there was no water. What does that mean? It means, ladies and gentlemen, because there has been no water for three and a half years, life was in stagnation. They were on one spot. Nothing was moving. There was no productivity. There was no harvest. In the midst of that, the Lord spoke a word. Go and show yourself to Ahab. I am about to change this season. You are too quiet now. Hear me. I don't know how you came to this house but I know how you are going to leave maybe you have been here for many years you have not had a testimony for many years there has been no rain in your life for many years there has been no rain in your business you have not had a testimony you have not had a breakthrough God sent me to tell you that after the service rain is coming to your life I see rain coming to your life God is opening the windows of heaven. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. 
It's going to rain in your marriage. It will rain in your business. It will rain in your finances. Somebody say, Lord, let it rain. You're not hearing me now. After three years, year one, no rain. Year two, no rain. Year three, no rain. Not even due. The land was cracking. The animals were dying. There had been no water in the earth. The heavens were closed. But God said, I am bringing this rubbish to an end. The fact that you are living from paycheck to paycheck, God says, I'm bringing it to an end. The fact that you are borrowing to pay your bills, God says, I'm bringing it to an end. The fact that you are still man on the marriage, God says, I'm bringing it to an end. You are almost 40 and not married. God says, I'm bringing it to an end. You are doing your best in life, no profit. God says, I'm bringing it to an end. I come to tell you. I come to tell you. I come to tell you. The heavens are open. Rain is here. I said, rain is here. I said, rain is here. There is an end. And surely, the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. This is the end of your crisis. This is the end of your limitation. This is the end of your tears. The Egyptians should saw before. After the service, you will see them no more. 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 I don't know your cries or the tears of your heart. God said to tell you, it is a new season. I hear God say, with the million for the night, but joy, it comes in the morning. God sent me to tell you, under the grace of my mother and my father, that affliction is coming to an end. Your tears is coming to an end. Lift your hands, Shafa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 Say get ready. Get ready. <laughs> in verse 41 of the scripture that we read, in verse 41, Elijah said to Ahab, He said, Get up, get up, get up, eat and drink. You are not here now. He said, Get up, eat and drink, for I hear the sound of rain. You don't understand this. Until you run to First Samuel in chapter number 1 and verse number 17. Hannah had been praying, believing God for a child. There was no child for many years. And when she prayed one day, God sent Eli hey, and said to her, daughter, your petition is granted. Go in peace. In verse number 18, and Anna rose up. She went home. She went to eat. Somebody say eat. She went to eat and drink. Hear what God said to tell you. This is where prophesy the grace of God is upon me. And my eyes are open. I prophesy under the grace upon my father. After now, there's a celebration in your house. There is a big celebration in your house. You will eat and drink. You will eat the fruit of your labor. I see God wiping your tears. No more weeping. You are getting up from obscurity. Get up out of depression. Get up out of shame. Get up out of defeat. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can pull you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Grace is on your side. Lifting is on your side. Somebody holler. Get ready. Uh, get ready for what? Tell son. <laughs> Say for what? Slap your neighbor. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Say get ready. For what? 
touch your neighbor say for what anything can happen you have been waiting for a career to begin god said get ready you have been waiting for your green card god said to tell you get ready you have been believing god for a husband god said to tell you get ready you have been believing god for a child god said to tell you get 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 Six weeks ago, uh-huh. at the beginning of July, I believe, on that grace, I stood here and I made a prophetic declaration uh-huh. that in six weeks, yes. what has never happened before, I stood here, yes. I said in six weeks, yes, what has never happened before, yes, it's about to happen. I came the following Sunday and I stood here and I said what has never happened before in five weeks. Yeah. why I am telling you uh-huh. I am not a bastard yes. there is a grace on top of my head yes. the grace upon my father yes. the grace upon my mother yes. has anointed me yes. to preach the gospel yes. to deliver the captive yes. to set them free yes. I announce to you yes. that the reign of heaven yes. is touching you now Amen. it's touching you now Amen. it is touching your business Amen. touching your career yes. Say yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at this. God said, Go and show yourself to Ahab. I am sending rain. Yes, Somebody say rain. Rain. Oh. Uh-huh. Hey, hey. Can I talk to you? I will do the best that I can. If my mother is in the house, the unusual grace is here. Red, you are red, not hearing me now. Red. If I open my mouth now it's and tell you your level has changed, it's go to the bank, it has changed. Red, hey, you are not here now. Hey, if I open hey, my mouth hey, and I tell you your level has changed, hey, you can go to the bank. Hey, your level has changed. Hey, hey, there is an unusual hey, grace in the house. The I stretch my heart under the grace upon my father. Yes. And mother in the yes. house I prophesy over your life there is a lifting for you Amen. there is a lifting for you Amen. there is a turn around for you Amen. look at this Elijah said God is sending rain <laughs> in Joel in Joel chapter number 2 in verse number 23 God said, rejoice all ye land. Mm-hmm. It says, for God had given you the former rain. Somebody say former rain. Oh, my rain. Moderately. Moderately. It says, but I will cause to come upon you. Uh-huh. The rain. Hey! The rain. The rain. The rain. The, rain. the latter rain. The latter rain. The former and the latter rain. Former and the latter rain. In one. In one month. Huh? You are too quiet. Huh? I won't preach again. You are too quiet for me. Ah. You are too quiet. Hey. Not with my mother in the house. Hey, 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 you hey, are hey. too quiet. Hey, hey, hey. God says I will send you the rain. Uh-huh. The early rain. Papa. And the latter rain. Yes, in one month. Can I break it down to you? Yes, sir. Sit down and make a young Bible. Uh-huh. Let me young Bible. Bible. You are not here now. Redemptive. Listen to me. It says I will give you the early rain. And the latter rain in one month. Ladies and gentlemen, farmers understand this more than we do. Because if you are a farmer, you need two rain. Somebody said two rain. Uh-huh. The early rain indicates planting season. Somebody said planting. Uh-huh. So when the first rain comes, a farmer that has been keeping seed, he knows it is time to plant. Are you here now? And then the the latter rain is the rain that indicates harvest. Uh-huh. We are not here now. But God says, I will give you the early rain and the latter rain. The natural progression of life, according to Genesis, seed time and harvest. So between seed, there is time. And then comes what? The harvest. 
Now, Jesus, God says, if you read in John chapter 5, in verse number, in John 4, chapter 35, Jesus said, don't you say that there are five months before the harvest? But I tell you now, look up. The harvest is already ripe. You are not hearing me at all. Yes. Jesus is standing at the season of the early rain. And he's saying, don't wait four months for this testimony. Don't wait five months for this turnaround. Don't wait ten months for you to have a level that is changed. Don't wait six months for this breakthrough. I am the Lord of the harvest. I determine when it's seed time. I determine when it's harvest. God said to tell you, even now, I don't know where you are. It is your harvest season. Please, let me break it down to you. God says, I will give you the early rain and the latter rain. The early rain is a what? Talk to me now. For planting. The latter rain is a what? For harvest. Now, so when you plant, you wait a few months or years until harvest time. God says, in order for me to do what I want to do and do it quickly, I will have to remove the time between the seed. I'll take away. Hey! Oh, oh, oh. Hey! 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 hey. hey. Yes. Listen to me, please, please. I will remove the time between the seed and the harvest rather than seed and then time before the harvest. God says, I am going to give you the first rain and the latter rain in one month. So what you are going to see, somebody says seed, harvest, seed, harvest. God is going to shut down the number of time it needs for your testimony rather than one year. Somebody is going to testify in one month. What will take 10 years? God said to tell you one year. And the hand of God was upon the light. And he had run the chariot of Ahab. Somebody say overtake. Overtake. Shall overtake. overtake. The speed of God oh, speed is of coming God. upon you. Yes, it doesn't matter who started before. Abalagia. You will overtake them. Amen. You will overtake them. Amen. You will overtake them. Amen. You will overtake them. Shot fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. The rain. First of all, it's for harvest. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. When you hear us shouting rain, because God has showed us that rain was coming, rain is here. So which means that rain ushers your harvest. There are many of you, you have sown seeds by way of walking in the house of God, uh -huh. evangelizing, yes. walking in sanctuary, yes. doing your faithfulness in the house of God. Uh -huh. Those are seeds Ayah. that you are planted. Yes, All your good works, uh -huh. it has not died. Yes. It is under the ground, mm. waiting for rain. Yay. You are not here now. Rain. If you knew what I told you, oh, rain. you would have been on your feet. Rain. Because the rain that is here Yahadia. is going to give life to everything around you that us. was dry, that was barren. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That brings me to the second point. God showed this to me on Thursday during prayer meeting. How many of you are here on Thursdays? It is hot here. How many know it's hot? Thursday, 7 p.m. You don't believe yes, it? Shit. Try us. Come on, talk. you will know we pray in Omega. We were praying in the midst of prayer. God gave me this scripture. Job 14 and verse 7. The second purpose of this reign is in Job 14 and 7. Now look at this now. It says, Ayabasha, Kabbalah, Shobragada. It says, there is hope for a tree that is cut down. Somebody say hope. Hope. There is hope for a tree that is cut down. It will sprout again. And the tender branches thereof will not cease. Hey. Run to verse number 8 for me. Though the roots be wax old on the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground. Uh -huh. hey, hey! Please go to 19, so that God, go to verse 9, so that God will bless you. It says, yet, through the scent of water. Ah. Uh, please excuse me. Yay. Uh, can, can we go back to primary school? Hey. They told us in primary school that one of the characteristics of water 
is that he has no scent. It has no odor. I didn't know. I sat down like a mumu, receiving everything they told me. Had I known like I know now, I would have said, e excuse me, ma. <laughs> Job 14 verse 9 say, water has scent. I'm not here now. Are you here now? Yay. Through their medical apparatus, they determine that water has no scent. And the Bible is telling us water has scent. Whose report do you believe? The Lord's report. Can I talk to you what God is telling me now? There is somebody here under the sound of my voice. The same apparatus, apparatus. that they used to determine that water has no scent. It's the same apparatus yes. that they have used to determine yes, that you have cancer. Uh -huh. They used that apparatus yes. to tell you you can't have a baby. Yes. They used that apparatus to tell you you have blood pressure. Yes. I come with the apparatus of heaven. Yes. Under the grace of my father. to you. Yes. The reports of the Lord. Yes. You have no cancer. Amen. That cancer dies. Amen. That blood pressure dies. Amen. Diabetes come out. Amen. The pressure come out. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at this. He says at the scent of water. You don't know what that means at all. When a tree dies, when he's cut down, we expect that the next thing is decay. Come on now, talk to me. Yes, sir. When you cut down a tree, the next thing is what? It's decay. But God said, even that tree that is cut down, no matter how long it has been there, he said there is hope for that tree. Yes. They are not here now. There is what? Hope. hope. Tell somebody there is hope. There is Come hope. Come on, slap your neighbor high five. Say there is hope. There is hope. Say there is hope. There is hope. Listen to me. If God can give hope to a tree, that means nothing to him. If God can give hope to a tree, that means nothing. He says, why are you worried about what you are going to eat and drink? He says, even Solomon was not as clotted as two sparrows. He says, am I talking now? He says, Sol Solomon in all his glory was not as clotted as the lily of the valley who are here today and gone tomorrow. How much more you that Jesus Christ died for? How much more you that Jesus Christ bled for? He hung his head. He stretched his hand so you can have hope. Slap your neighbor. Say don't give up. There is hope. I thank God you didn't die last year. I thank God you didn't die in your crisis. The devil meant for you to die in that crisis. But you are here today. Not by power. Not by much. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. Where will I be? Where will I be? I thank God. It was him no. that kept me. Yes. I hear the Bible says, no. if God be for you, no. uh, yeah, Ooh. be against yes. you. Somebody Ooh. holler, yeah. No. At the scent of water. So the next thing that water does is restoration. You are too quiet now. You are too quiet. You are too quiet. What was dead, what was dead, giving up on where I'm from, when you cut down wood, the next destination is the fire. Are you hearing me now? God said that wood will not die the way they expected. Am I talking now? Yes, sir. He says at the scent of water, what was dead? Can I take it further? When you go back to Joel, Joel 2, in verse number 24, in 23, it says, I will send you the rain. The latter rain and the early rain in one month. What will happen is this. In the next verse, what will first of all happen in your life? Somebody say harvest. Because in verse 24, after 23, 23 says the rain is coming. And in 24 it says, and your floor shall be full of what? Somebody say wheat. And your wine press shall what? Overflow. Somebody say harvest. harvest. Somebody say harvest. harvest. Somebody say harvest. harvest. So the first purpose of this rain is what? Harvest. The second purpose is in 25. In 25, he says, I will restore to you. You are too quiet. I will not preach. I will restore to you. Ya ta ta ta. 
get the sick at Ubarakataya. I will restore to you the years that you lost, the years that the caterpillar age, the years that the locust age. God says, I will restore to you. Hear me as I talk to you, ladies and gentlemen. Caterpillars don't eat money, locusts don't eat money. They eat years. You have been in a relationship for over two years with a man. He wakes up one man and says, hey, I'm so sorry. I, I, I think uh, me and you can no longer continue. Go punish the devil. I spent two years of my life with you. You're going to wake up tell me I'm sorry you want to move over. Ladies and gentlemen, that man didn't just take your relationship. He took years from you. But God says, don't worry. Moses is dead. Joshua, arise. Forget about yesterday. Don't consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. I am doing a new thing in your life. A new thing in your marriage. A new thing in your business. God is going to restore the years that the caterpillar took. The years that the locust ate. What God is going to do. It shall be good measure. It shall be pressed down. It shall be shaken together. Say let it rain. So by virtue of this rain, because my mom is about to handle the mic, by virtue of this rain, expect at least two things in your life. Somebody say harvest. Hey, harvest. The way you are responding is as though you have not heard me. Yeah. When God gave us the word that rain was coming, right. he said six weeks. We thought maybe at the end. Not knowing, listen to me. We gathered here for those of you who may not know the story. We gathered here. The Lord told us to gather in the upper room. There's what we call upper room here for, for three nights, nine hours, just prayer for nine hours, three nights, rather da, da, nine hours because we felt something was lingering. We felt that something was about to break loose, uh -huh. but we had to enter the labor room. Right on. The upper room is the labor room. Yeah. We went in there. You say, Pastor, what are you saying? Let me climb the altar and tell you what I am saying. Hey, I said, under the grace of God, that's beginning now. Where you have never entered before, you are entering by fire. What you have never handled before, you are handling by fire. What you could not achieve before, you will achieve it this year. Look at this. The Bible says, <laughs> Saza, the rain will bring harvest and restoration. Somebody say restoration. Restoration. Don't give up that business. Don't give up that marriage. Because all it has been waiting for is rain. Look no further for the rain. For it is here. Please sit down, sit down. Look at this. Elijah tells Ahab, go up and drink. And Elijah took off to eat and drink. And the Bible says Elijah went onto the Mount Carmel and began to kabash. He began to pray. While he was praying, he sent his servant. He said, go and look in the sea. In verse number 43, I think. He says, go and look in the sea. Go and tell me what you see. Elijah is praying. Send his servant. His servant is up looking at the sea. What am I looking for? Just be looking. He went the first time. Huh. I don't see anything. He went back to Elijah. Excuse me, sir. I don't see anything. Elijah said, go back. Look in the sea. Tell me what you see. He went back. I don't see anything. Came back seven times. And at the seventh time, he saw a hand, like the hand of a man, coming out, not from the cloud, from the sea. You are not hearing me now. 
You are not hearing me now. Why would Elijah want to look into the sea? Because he's about to call rain. And he needs to have a vision. You are not hearing me now. I want rain. Hey. Not just a lake. Not just a trinkle of water. Uh -huh. Not a cup of water. I want to have perspective of what I'm praying for. I don't want a small rain that will quench my thirst. I want a river. I want an ocean. Hey. Elijah began to look into the sea uh -huh. because he wanted to have a vision. Hey. Write the vision. Make it plain that they may run the rivet for the vision. It's for an appointed time. It may tarry, but it will speak. If God speaks a word, it's only a matter of time. It will speak. God is not a man that it should lie. Not the son of man that it should repent. Have you not heard? Have you not known yes. that the everlasting God, yes. the creator uh -huh. of the ends of the earth, yes. is neither weary. Yes. There is no certain yes. to his understanding. Yes. The youth may fail. Yes. The young may utterly yes. fall. He giveth power uh -huh. to the weak. Yes. I hear God said to tell you, in this service, in this service. that rain will touch you. He says to Elijah, look in the sea. Uh -huh. You are praying for rain. Huh. How much rain do you want? How much rain? You're, you're, you're not here. You're not here. How much rain? You're not here. This is Omega. We teach Bible. You're not here now. You don't go into a church because they prophesy or they work miracles. What you are looking for, somebody said, the word of God. Word of God. He says, go and look in the sea to give you visual. Listen to me. You want to have a job. What kind of job do you want? Not that, you know, help me manage every month job. Listen, God says, look in the sea. Quit looking at patched land. Quit looking at dry ground. Keep your eyes on the sea. God has told Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to give you a child. Abraham says, please, just let Ishmael live. I'm getting old. Yeah, you know, just let Ishmael. God says, not Ishmael. Out of your dry body and the dry womb of Sarah, I will give you a seed. Abraham could not still comprehend it. Abraham, God said to Abraham, get out from where you are. Look to the sky. What do you see? Abraham says, I am seeing skies. He said, can you number them? Can you number them? Abraham said, of course. One, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fourteen, seventeen. Uh, excuse me, Lord, I made a mistake. I said, it's okay, take your time, take your time. Count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, fourteen, eighteen. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. God said, take your time. Yeah, so I want to slow down now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, twenty-four, eighteen, nineteen. He said, God, this thing is hard. Oh. It is impossible for man to number the stars. God says, that is what I am trying to show you. That if I be Yeshua and Mashiach, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the God that rides upon the wings as a chariot, that created a barrier between water and land and said water should not come to land. If I am that same God that dies never again. If I am the same yesterday, today and forever as long as the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool there shall not be able to number your children in this life. Hear me as I prophesy under the grace of my father and my mother present in the house. If God be God, if I be under grace, I prophesy before this year is over, you will stand to testify. You will stand to testify. I stand on this altar and I prophesy in less than six months you are coming back here with the testimony of rain. You will testify your life. Hallelujah. Tell somebody your vision must match your prayers. Are you hearing me now? If you are praying, pray for something big. Are you hearing me now? My father in the Lord had never traveled to, uh, to Cameroon in his life when he asked them to give him a map of the world. Right there in Auchi, laying hands, I claim America. I claim Europe. I claim Austria. Claiming the, he has never left Auchi. But he was there 
while he's praying, he's looking at the sea. Tell somebody, quit looking at your finances. Quit looking at your credit. Quit looking at your background. Look up onto the hills. From whence cometh your help? Tell somebody, put the sea in perspective. How am I talking now? Yes, sir. Dear to apply, listen to me. You're not hearing me now. My father, as of today, has traveled 106 countries. He has not left for one before he claimed the whole. You're not here now. You're not here. Back in the day, my father would go to crusades. He would tell his senior pastors. He says, go. Go and wash the car. Go and clean the tire. They are looking at him. Did we bring car? You brought car? That was, I, I, I thought you brought car. I didn't bring car. They want to go and meet him. He said, if you come here. You better wash that car and tell me how it looks like. I'm not hearing me now. Tell somebody look into the sea. Into the sea. You need to look in the sea. Listen to me. My name is Pastor Rich. I'm a son of the oracle. By the grace of God, I pastor one of the biggest churches in Texas. Amen. You are not hearing me now. You are not hearing me now. Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. If your father is an elephant, size is your portion. My father cannot be the lion of Africa and I'm the cockroach of Texas. Then God punish the devil. I'm not talking at all. I say if, Eli, if your father is an elephant, don't put size in your prayer points. Remove it. Remove it. It's only a matter of time. If you stay faithful under the grace, it will not leave you where you found you. You don't believe me, ask me and my wife. We are a product of this grace. Am I talking now? Yay. I don't have two fathers, though. Me and my wife, we don't have two fathers. We have one. Because some of you now, you have, you have, you have one for your head, one for your waist, one for bad dream. Hey. Father's here, father's here, and one says there is no foundation. The other one says there is foundation. Now you are confused. Should I pray foundation prayer? Should I not? You are confused because you have your fathers. There are many. How am I talking now? Have one. If God reveals to you that your father is Apostle Suleiman, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Don't let foundation move you. Because listen to me now, the grace knows. Listen to me. Listen, if you, if you are consistent under this grace, it's only a matter of time. I'm not guessing. It's only a matter of time. Because some of you now, you are just, you are just, they say that church. Let me go and try that one. If God, now when God reveals to you, in order for the devil to remove you from that grace, from walking your life, he makes you to find offense in that church. Folk in that church start talking about you. Now you get offended. Man, you see? That's why all these African churches, I, I, just, I, just, I, don't, I just look at them because, you know, I just come do my own je -je -je and I go. Because, you know, that's why the grace is looking at you. Because you are not in it. You are not connected. How can you, what are you going to say about me now? That we remove me from my father's house. It's not possible. So please, if you have been a victim of that, get back in the house. Are you hearing me now? He says, look in the sea. Your neighbor, look in the sea. Don't look at the dry ground. Look in the sea. Look in the sea. Look at possibilities for your life. They say there is no job in Houston. Say, I'm going to be a manager in this land. Am I talking now? Yes, Listen to me. Your dream must be bigger than your pocket. Am I talking now? As long as you are praying, let your dream match up with your prayers. You may not have a nice house today, but drive yourself to a nice neighborhood. That house. That's my bedroom. Don't go inside, who? Just answer. I'm not hearing me now. If you can see it as far, because at the seventh time, for the first time, first one, second one, the sixth one, nothing. At the seventh time, he began to see it. And as he saw it, he came to Elijah. Elijah said, This is it. He's quit praying. That means if you can see it, you cannot be denied. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. If you can see it, your foundation can't stop it. Can you see your business exploding? Can you see yourself with your lovey lovey? Yeah. Heading down the altar. Yeah. And 
going to meet my love. Uh -huh. Where he liveth, I will live. Hey. Where he goeth, I will go. Uh -huh. His people shall be mine. Hey. I'm going. You will sing that song, go. Uh -huh. As many of you that are believing for a wedding this year, yeah. now me go marry you. Hey, Of your future, not your past. <laughs> Don't keep record of the boys who broke your heart. The boy has moved on. He's in a club looking for a new one. You are in the bathroom looking at pictures. <laughs> yeah, look at. Oh. I gave, I gave you all my heart. I gave you all my heart. I gave you all my heart. You said you will marry me. You gave me. How could you do this to me? You, uh, like, you are a mumu. That is why they broke you. You are a mumu. You have not heard the tape of my father. Somebody has not proposed to you. You are there doing night VG. Reading romance. You are doing night VG. Using your tights to fry egg for him. Uh, why won't he break your heart? Uh, you are not serious. Oh. As I'm talking as of you now, your clothes, your underwear is in a man's house. Uh, you were shouting before. Why are you quiet? Reach up, Pastor. Reach up. What up? Your Christianity has no base. Hey. Man, just tell you. He didn't even tell you. He just drove past you. You just oh. weak. Took you to Burger Kings. Now you are saying, Can we go to your house? Hey. Who is your father? Huh? Who is your father? If you know your what, if you like buy you Louis, Louis Vuitton back, he will be happy to even get your number. But he just saw you. Now, the following day, you are doing you are doing night VG, watching YouTube with popcorn. He not gonna marry you. I'm telling you, he not gonna marry you. My wife is here. I met my wife in February. Are you hearing me? We married in October. Ask her, honey, did I do mm, with you? There was no mew, mew, mew. There was nothing. There, we didn't tap, there was no tapping correct. We did it the Omega way. Are you hearing me now? Yeah. Are you here? There was no night VG in my house. He did not cook for me. We didn't tap. There was no less hog. No! no I coming. told I said, when I will say it, I will jump on the altar. Are you hearing me now? If your pastor can do it, you can do it. Yes. That's your Houston Christianity. So base. That brings me to the next point. Somebody say, Pastor, move on. I'm not going to, I go expose it. Bring it out. Preach up, Pastor. You don't like this. Like, you want to go to church where they tell you, if any man is in Christ, sin doesn't matter. Listen, don't worry, don't worry about sin. No. What is sin? Eat the fruit, lose the garden. Are you hearing me now? The best you can get from sin is beans. You don't believe me? Go and ask this song. Porridge. Porridge. You are giving yourself to a man that is carrying ISIS and an Iran. Syria put together. And you open yourself, you say you are in love. He is browsing. When he finishes, he will go to another place. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Browsing. The second thing which is very important because my mother is going to handle this mic now. Browsing. Before Elijah we call down fire, he said in verse number 41, the Bible says, and he said, gather everybody together at the altar. I believe chapter 33. He says, gather everybody together. Let us rebuild the altar. Somebody say rebuild the altar. Somebody say rebuild the altar. The people are crying for rain. God says before I give you rain, the altar that has been broken must be what? Rebuilt. God began to show me this a few weeks ago. There are many Christians who are serving God because of need, not relationship. They are serving God because of what? Not relationship. Oh God, give me rain. God says, order. He says, and he built the altar and set the wood in order. Somebody said, build the altar build the and earth. set the wood where? Somebody says, set, set it in order. Listen to me. If you read in Luke, I believe chapter 19 or so, when Jesus was going to feed the multitude, 
The Bible says they were crying for bread. Before he would give them bread, he said, tell them to sit down where? In multitude of 50. Give us bread. Give us. God said, yes, you eat bread. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, forty-nine, fifty. Stay here. One, two, Lord, bread. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lord, one, four, six, forty-nine, fifty. Stay here. He put everybody in order before he breaks bread. God does not bless a mess. Are you hearing me now? God does not do what? You want to enjoy this rain, you need to put certain things in order in your life. There are many of you used to have money devotion. But sometimes now, because of your schedule at work, no money, money, money devotion. In fact, by the time you wake up, heaven has closed a money session. You have broken down that altar. That was an altar before God. Somebody said, build the altar. There were many of you were living right for God. An altar of righteousness. But now, since you came to Houston, in fact, this is the first time you have been in church in many weeks. Your Bible, forget that one. We've not read it in months. Those are altars you had before God. And it's broken. Somebody said, build the altar. You used to be regular in the house of God. You don't miss church. But now, let your favorite show be on. We will watch online. You, are, you pick and choose the day you come to church. You are broken altars. God says, this rain, if you must enjoy what he came to do, tell somebody, build the altar. You must make up your mind. I cannot miss church for anything. You used to serve in the house of God. You belong to a department. When you were in Africa, you were very serious for God. Now you came to America, your Christianity is so based. You have forgotten your altar. God says, rebuild the altar. You used to pay your tithes. But now you don't anymore. You have believed those messages that they teach you from your other fathers that tithing is Old Testament. You have believed that. That tithing is Old Testament. Because of your many teachers, they have confused you. You used to be very serious. But now your tithe, no. You are, God says, I want your altar back in place. The last thing I will tell you about this. The one of the most important altar, you as a married man. The altar of your marriage. Tell somebody, are you married? Look to your neighbor, are you married? Are you Pastor married? is talking to you now. The altar of your marriage. God says, I want that in order. I want it where? In order. By the grace of God, my wife and I will be two years in October. I have never raised my hand on my wife. What is raised my hand? Even shout, said, honey, please. I've never shouted on you before. She's here, oh, ask her. Never at the shout. It's not in me. You know why? It's not in my father. Are you here now? My father cannot preach. If mama is not happy, I heard it and I practice it. You know why? Because I heard it from my father. I, my father taught me. I've been, I cannot preach. For what? My wife is not happy and I'm preaching. What am I preaching? You don't know the place of your wife in your life. Your wife is your prayer. Oh, send me helpers. Your wife is your number one helper. Are you hearing me now? If I'm praying, asking God a question, and I'm not getting clarity, I ask my wife. Are you hearing me? Because women have more sense of discernment than men. But you, you can never ask your wife for advice. You, you ask your wife for what? What does she know? In fact, she doesn't know anything about you. Even your, your, how much you make now, your husband, does, your wife doesn't know. It's like a secret. Your password, hey, understory. Your password is like asshole rock. It's like White House. Can't even penetrate. Look at the kind of password you are using. Something that nobody can ever guess. Okro. Okro. Cassava. Nkrumah. Your wife? What are you keeping secret for? What? What are you keeping? In fact, God blessed me recently with a new cell phone. I was looking for a password for my phone. I remember my wife's password. And I put it. I copied my, my, my password for my wife. 
What am I hiding? Hello? Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. As money enters my hand, I give it to my wife. All of them. Because I know me on Father Christmas. In order for me to save, I give her. Are you hearing me? What secret? You're just hiding. That's why your life is not moving forward. You are praying, oh God, oh God, open my door. God is just looking at you. Because your wife is crying. She's crying. What can your wife be crying and say, crocodile tears, crocodile tears. You can't cry blood, cry blood. And you, woman, don't say, Pastor, I said this now. You will not go home now. So when your husband will say something, <laughs> you are not a Christian. You are Jesse Bell's cousin. You are not a Christian. If you are a Christian, you will now to submit yourself to your husband. Now, first, no matter what matter I get. Am I talking now? No. Can I, women, can I talk to you? The greatest gift you can give your husband, can I talk to you? Is honor. Somebody say honor. Honor your husband. You are not too big to prostrate for your husband. Now, your husband has never been to church. He follows to church for the first time. And you come and meet pastor. You see pastor, you meet her, and he's looking at you. My wife just knelt down for pastor. Doesn't need down for me. You think he will come back to church again? You think he will come back? Because he just look at you. You are fake. You are not real. How do you need that for your pastor? Your husband. Who is your pastor at home? You can't need that. He said, no, I only need that for the Lord, my God. You are a, you're not a Christian. You're not a Christian. I'm telling you. No, they didn't tell you before. You honor, you honor, you honor your husband. You don't have to win the argument. If your husband is hot, let him be hot. Are you hearing me now? Let me quickly, let, let me run this up very quickly. The last thing I will tell you, and then we'll pray, so my mother, so my mother can take the phone. Look at me, very important. Please pay attention, very important. Last point I'm giving you. Elijah is going to call now for rain. Please pay attention. If you miss this point, you have missed everything. Are you with me? Elijah is calling for rain. He says, prepare the sacrifice. And they gave one, sac one, uh, one of the bullocks to Tobiah. And the other altar was for Elijah. And the people began to cry, Tobiah. And nothing happened. The Bible says, at the time of the evening sacrifice, the Bible says, that Elijah said, let the people gather. And they gathered. Watch, 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 watch. Elijah says, pour water on the sacrifice. Somebody say pour water. What is, what is the significance of that? Pour water. Once. He said, pour more. Two. Pour more. Three. Pour more. Four. Ladies and gentlemen, for three years, there has been no rain. All the brooks are drying. The lakes are drying up. No water. And yet, Elijah says, before rain comes, pour water. What does that mean? Before rain comes, you must sow water. Uh, are you following me now? Are you, are you following me now? Rain. Elijah is crying for rain. And God says, I need a token from you. I need a token. I don't need sand. In fact, the animal was not the sacrifice. Can I shock you? It was not. The animal was an offering. Yeah, I'm not here now. The animal was a what? The sacrifice was the water. You know why? There is no water. There is no water. Three and a half years. No water. You think God will say, okay, since there's no water, let's, let's just know. God says, you want rain. I need water. And they poured water. Not just small. Twice. Elijah said, too small. Pour water on this thing. Because what is about to come is massive. Tell someone, if you need rain, so water. If you need rain, tell somebody, so water. I'm not here to preach. I'm here to just make declarations over your life. 
Hallelujah. I did it intentionally. I wanted, I actually asked Pastor Rich to preach. So I just come up and bless you. Because that is why I am here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed so far? Have you been blessed? Please put your hands together and celebrate. Celebrate God. I don't like the way you do, you celebrate God here. I don't like it. Hallelujah. Thank God for the life of uh, Pastor Rich. You can see he's a true son of the Father. <laughs> you know, sometimes people don't understand. It is always, uh, it's advisable that you sit down and listen. It's not just to continue to pour out. Hallelujah. You sit down and listen. Um, Pastor Rich, in fact, I've been blessed. God bless you. God bless your wife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like he rightly said, I, I'm here with my children. By the grace of God, maybe for some time. Amen. And... Um, Anywhere I find myself, I always tell people that we are grateful to God that somebody answered the call. Somebody said, yes, Lord. And that is why there is Omega Fire Ministries today, where we all can come together, we learn at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. So please, I want you to help me celebrate my husband. Let me say something to you. It's very easy. It's very easy. Anywhere I stand to talk like this, I tell them, I say, see, if I tell you celebrate my husband, you are doing it the way you like it. I'll just go down. I'm going to sit down there. I'll go and sit down. You know why? Let me tell you. Let me say this to you. This is the man that has been a blessing to my life in all ramification. Hallelujah. He has been a blessing, not just to me alone, not just to my our children, and not just to our biological children, but to millions of people around the world. So, when I say celebrate my husband, you are coming up. Yes, that is better. It is because the Holy Spirit, you know, God has um, said that today I'll be here and that is why I'm here. See, just wave your hands to the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus. You can just keep doing that. Wave your hands to the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus, for his faithfulness, for his goodness, for his mercies, for his love. You don't understand. You don't just understand. You don't even have an idea at all what God has done in your life. You are well and alive today is by his mercy. Hallelujah. I want you to celebrate yourself. Quickly do that. Celebrate yourself. Put your hands together. Celebrate yourself. Hallelujah. I was listening to Papa's message. For those of you that have, have followed the, the message, the Sunday message, I think, okay, in the morning in Nigeria, uh, the last prayer point Papa took was uh, divine visitation fall upon me. And I prayed that prayer like, I, I've, like I've never prayed before. If there is anything we need in our lives is divine visitation. I told you I just came to speak over your life, to agree with my husband. You know, as I'm here, Papa is here. You believe that? And I beg of you, every word that is coming up from here, receive it with the whole of your heart. There's a song Papa always liked to sing. And it, in fact, that song, I think by, by Ada, by Ada, 
testimony. You know the song? Okay. Uh, favor, let's hear you. For the Lord himself is my passion. I want you to sing that song. It's a prophetic declaration. It's a prophetic declaration because this meeting will not end until you have a testimony. Thank you, Jesus. It teaches me to prosper. I have come with stories to tell. I have come with testimony. Take a look at me, you can see it. We can come with testimony. This is my time and it is my season. All around me, testimony. was so mighty by the visitation of the, of the Lord they had John the Baptist when you look at the story of Sarah Papa was just emphasizing on he actually took his test from Genesis chapter 21 he was just emphasizing on the life of Sarah for those of you that watched watch the live program, he was just emphasizing on the life of Sarah. I don't need anything. What I need, Lord, is a divine visitation. Some of you have been praying prayers since last year. It's, in fact, it's a repeated prayer. Can this thing change? What I need is a divine visitation. My prayer point last year should not be the same prayer point today. Oh my God. You don't understand what I am saying. My prayer point last two years, some people are still praying the same. They are still repeating the same thing. What is going on? What you need is a divine visitation. Yes. And I came to speak over your life. Yes. In the name that is above every other name. I receive. After this meeting today. I receive. Receive a divine visitation. Amen. Receive a divine visitation. Amen. Receive a divine visitation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't like a situation where one thing will just keep repeating itself in a repeated problem in your life. There can be a change. Are you listening to me? Yes, Lord. You have been praying and believing God for the fruit of the womb since, I mean, praying that prayer since last year. You're still praying the prayer this year. Oh, no. You have been believing God for a good job. Praying that same prayer all through last year. And this year, it's a repeated prayer. I don't know what has become, a, a, I mean, a, the challenge that has been so prolonged in your life. Today, get an answer. Amen. I said, get an answer. Amen. I said, get an answer. Amen. If you believe that, shout it. Yes. Yes. When Pastor was talking, and it was, you know, it started by, you know, talking about remembrance. 
I don't know. The spirit of God is one. Thank you, Jesus. I just looked at I just looked at my 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 daughter and I just smiled. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if it's possible, that's exactly what I have here. Hallelujah. A remembrance. Amen. And it was even in the, even the life of Hannah, God just kept talking to me. Thank you, Jesus. This same woman, the Bible says anytime they go to Shiloh, she will pray and pray and pray, pray out her life. Like, God, I need a divine visitation. That's what you need. When the hand of God comes upon your life, the story turns around. Hey! Are you listening to me this morning? Yes! Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes! That's what you need. I don't need that. Lord, the reason why I'm here today is to get a divine visitation. I don't know what's going on in your family. I don't know. Somebody's looking at me right now. Something is not right in that family. Something is not right. You have been crying and crying. You need a change. You just, you just, you just need things to turn around. But you don't know how it's going to happen. But listen to me. God said I should say to somebody. And I make this bold declaration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that seems to be a burden, a challenge in your life, today it is lifted. Amen. 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 If you believe that, shut fire. Hey. In Jeremiah 15, verse 15. I just kept pondering on the, the life, everything about the life of Hannah. The husband even came to and said to her, I said, Look, I'm, don't I even watch more than 10 sons to you? That is not what I want. 10 sons is not even the issue here. He said, Can't you can't you just can't you eat? Can't you can't you just at least behave like other normal? I cannot be normal when things are not normal. Yes, yes. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. I can't be normal when things are not normal. Are you listening to me? Yes, ma'am. Problem with a lot of Christians. We are just too, in fact, in, in, a, in that comfort zone. Let's tell somebody you have to come out. 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 Some of us are just too comfortable. We are just too comfortable. You don't know what to do. You have to get out of that comfort zone. Are you listening to me? The husband said to her, I am I not even what more than 10 sons to you? That is not the issue. That is not the issue. I know what I want. I know what I am looking for. And the Bible says, God remembered Hannah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Put your two hands on Jesus. your head. Put your two hands on your head. If the Bible says in Jeremiah 15 verse 15, Oh Lord, thou knowest. Remember me and visit me. I'm going to give you just one prayer point. Papa took as the last prayer point while I was ministering in the morning. We are going to say, oh God, remember me and visit me. What do you want God to do for you? What do you want God to do for your children? Listen, this encounter today must produce a result in your life. Amen. I said this encounter will Amen. produce a result. It must produce a result. Amen. It must produce a result. Amen. It must produce a result. Yes. It must produce a result. Yes. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. By the power in the name yes. of Jesus. Everything that looks scattered in your life. They will be arranged again. Amen. They will be organized again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes. I want you to shout and scream. Say Lord. Lord. Let it fall upon me. Let it fall upon me. Fall upon me. Divine visitation. visitation. Fall upon me. 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 Ale, 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 ale,
understand something here. When Papa was talking, Papa was just emphasizing on the life of Sarah. And he said, the Bible says in verse 12 of Genesis chapter 18, Sarah laughed. Sarah laughed. Sarah laughed. And I began, Papa, Papa released the word and said, there's an unction for laughter that will rest upon somebody. And I, I have come here to say and to repeat the same words ah, to make this bold declaration yes. that there's an unction for laughter that will rest upon you. Amen! There's an unction for laughter that will rest upon Amen. you. Amen! There's an unction for laughter that will rest upon you. Amen! In the name of Jesus! Amen! Hey! In Genesis chapter 21, the Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah. That's what, that's what, that's just my interest. The Lord visited Sarah. Father, look at me. I need a divine visitation. Father, look at me. Look at my home. That's cry, not cry, not cry of a baby in the home. Oh God, look at me. I need to be fruitful. Fruitfulness is not even only in the area of childbearing. That's what I always tell people. If nothing is working in your life, it means that man or that woman is experiencing barrenness. It's not only in the area of childbearing. Look at me, Lord. I need a divine visitation. Yes, Lord. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said. As he has what? As he had said. And the Lord did according, I mean, unto Sarah as he had spoken. There's a word that God has for somebody today, and the word has been released. Yes, the word has been released yes, over your life, the life of your husband, your yes, children. Yes, there shall be a divine visitation. Amen. I said, There shall be a divine visitation. Amen. I said, There shall be a divine visitation. Amen. The Bible says in verse 6, the same Genesis chapter 21, it says, And Sarah said, God had made me to laugh. God had made me to laugh. Do you know, up until this time, the people have been, people have just been mocking you. So look at her, she goes to church every day. Nothing is happening around her life. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. There's an unction for laughter. Ah! Let them wait, let them wait, let them wait. Ah! And they are going to see a new you. Amen. It's not the same person they used to know. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, man. When the Lord turned again the captivity ah. of Zion, God, like they God. Are dream. Yes, Lord. Then our mouth filled with laughter. Yes, Listen to me. Yes. I want to beg you. Oh, All God. you need is just to hold on to God. Yes. So people give up easily. Just hold on to God. That's what you need. That's what you need. Just keep following him. Just keep following him. Some people will come to me for counseling and I tell them, I say, this thing is very easy. Very, very easy. Say, mama, what is it? I say, just keep following God. Just keep following him. Don't just lose focus. Don't lose focus. Keep following him. The way people follow Jesus, like Pastor was preaching, the way people, the Christianity, some people, what they call their own way of Christianity. In fact, they, they, they are doing it their own way, not by God's standard. And you are expecting a visitation? The Bible says that, I mean, Elizabeth and Zechariah, these were people that feared the Lord. Just walk in His ways. Just do the things that pleases him. Are you listening to me? With all the sincerity of her heart, Hannah was just following God. If you look at all the people that God visited, it was God looked at their hearts. What about Mary and Joseph? The Bible says Joseph was a just man. Mary, a virgin. So you could see that around their lives, you could see righteousness purity just keep following him am i speaking to anybody in this place just keep following him and the way it will happen even you cannot explain you cannot explain just keep following him 
Joseph, a just man. Don't say because you are in America, you have to do it in the way oh, they are doing it. The fact that everybody is doing it does not mean it's right. I'm just encouraging you. If you want a divine visitation, you must hold on to God. You must understand what it means to live right. You must understand what it means to live a life of purity and righteousness in the sight of God. Many Christians, they do it their own way. And you say you are expecting a divine visitation. Like pastor was talking to us. It's not possible. Are you listening to me? It is very, very hard to, for some people to hear this. But I must tell you, if it must be complete, if this thing must be balanced, you must live your life to please God. Are you following what I'm saying? When I enter some places and I see the way some people appear, I just wonder. I wonder, no, to be honest with you, if we, are, if we say, let's leave this place now, we are all going out on evangelism. Begin to ask yourself, with the way you are now, will somebody listen to the gospel? Will somebody listen to the gospel? Can you tell somebody Jesus loves you and the person will want to listen to you? With the way you are, your appearance. Let's do it the godly way. Not our own way. Because we want God to visit us. Look at the people, the persons we just gave to us as illustrations, examples rather. These were people that, that followed God in righteousness, in purity. Are you following what I am saying? Please, don't do it. There is, there is so much perfection. There is so much, I, I mean, I mean, a, a, a different style and way that Christians are doing it. The fact that they are doing it that way does not mean it is right. I talk to my, my single sisters in the church. I tell them, I say, look, if you say you want God to give you a husband, it is not, it is not until you appear with all kind of skimpy clothes, practically, practic you are just, you, 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 you are naked. No, I teach them how to appear well. I teach them how to appear well. I'm happy, I'm excited when I see Christians, ladies, Christian women, appearing in a godly way when you dress in the way that you 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 somebody else looks at you and a different ideas start coming into the mind of the person you have already made the person to go into fornication in his heart is that not what the bible says the person has committed adultery already or fornication when you dress as a christian look at your appearance before you step out of your house because you might be saying, oh, I'm talking to God. Oh, God loves me. But the way you appear is already discouraging somebody. Or rather, has made somebody to commit sin in his heart. There are a lot of things going on right now. In Omega Fire Ministries, I don't give them, even if you are a newcomer, to the, the day is your first time of coming. You don't appear anyhow. Let's keep talking. Let's keep talking. Sometimes when you talk, they tell you, oh, you know too much. Please allow me. I want to be myself. Or that, oh, we are in America. No. You do it in a godly way. Not in the way of the world. God's own standard. A modest dressing. A modest way of appearance. Are you listening to me? When you sit down as a lady, you sit down. You are no longer comfortable. You, 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 your, your, legs, your legs are wide open. There are some churches when the pastor is preaching, the pastor cannot look to your direction. What is it? What's that? It is very, very easy to appear well, to glorify God. I'm saying all these things. Time will not permit me to just keep talking and talking. But I'm just trying to make a point here. That our lifestyle will easily attract a divine visitation. Our lifestyle. The other day I traveled with my kids. The, 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 the vehicle, the person that was in the vehicle was saying some kind of, ah, mommy, yeah, we know you are a woman of God. You know, but in this country, in the UK, but you know in this country, there are some certain things you have to do. If you don't do it, you will just remain where you are. I said, no. I said, no. No, you don't have to do it that way. If you are a Christian, you must know who you are. 
Are you listening to what I'm saying? Many of us before now, we are supposed to have gotten our testimonies and miracles. But just check your life. Check your life. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. There's something that is still pulling you. As you are trying to, oh God, I need this thing. I need that there are a lot of obstacles, things hindering you from receiving the blessings. From receiving or getting the testimonies. Something is wrong. Check your life. I'm saying this because I don't want to step out of this place. Somebody will say, oh, that day mama came. I was believing God for a child. Oh, I thought after the, her coming and the words, God used her to speak into our lives. I, I was supposed to carry my baby by now. I'm supposed to be a mother by now. I'm supposed to have gotten my papers. Or I'm supposed to have gotten this. I'm supposed to have received this. I'm... Hello? Let's get it straight. Let's get it straight. Let this thing be balanced. I want you to lift up your two hands to the Lord. Say, Lord, show me your mercy. I want you to say it from your heart. Say, Lord, show me your mercy. Lord, show me your mercy. Say, Lord, show me your mercy. Lord, show me your mercy. What did the Bible say? In Genesis chapter 18, verse 11. He says, now, Abraham and Sarah, we are old and we're shrinking in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of a woman. Nothing is too difficult. Nothing is too hard for God. It is only the sight of men. We say, oh, this thing is difficult. Not in the sight of God. Listen, I'm going to pray for this category of persons now. There is a particular thing you have been believing God for. And it's not forthcoming. I am standing here. As God's own representative. To decree over your life. I don't know, listen, I don't just want you to come out because you need to come out. There is a particular thing that has been giving you so much concern. I want you to run here. Run here. Lift up your two hands to the Lord. Lift up your two hands to the Lord. You are going to make a promise to the Lord. Father, you know those things that have hindered the miracle. You know those things that have hindered the testimony. You know you know, the, the secret life, the, the things you do in the secrets, nobody is there. You know, you begin to beg God for mercy. You begin to tell God to show you mercy. Begin to beg him to have mercy on you, to forgive you. Before I pray this prayer. Tell the Lord to show you mercy. Tell the Lord to forgive you. Tell him you are sorry. Tell him you are sorry. Pastor was saying something while he was preaching. The relationship, some people call relationship, is no longer a relationship. It's no longer a relationship. They practically live in the house of the man. Papa will call them roommates, committing fornication. And there is something you are expecting from God. No, you are using, you are, you are already blocking the way. Tell the Lord to show you mercy. You know yourself better than any person. You know that thing you have been doing to offend God. Is it in your appearance? As you are listening to this message today, make a, a new, take a new leaf. Take a new leaf. Let your appearance be a Christian, a Christian indeed. Don't come to church putting on skimpy clothes. Putting on seducive clothes. No, you don't do that. You are already, you are, in, you are, you are causing somebody to, to fall into fornication or adultery. Leading the person to hell. Nobody wants to hear the message of heaven or hell anymore. But it's real. It's real. Beg God for mercy. Tell the Lord to show you his mercy. You don't live anyhow and expect God to deliver into your hands your miracle. You don't live anyhow. You don't live anyhow. In Omega Fire Ministries, it's a balanced message. The life of purity. We are not known for only prayers and the word. No. No. The life of purity. A righteous living. 
Lord, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Begin to mention them one after the other. If I leave this place and I don't tell you the reality, the reality or what you need to hear, then I'm deceiving myself. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it. Church is not just where you come to and hear the message of oh, prosperity. Oh, you are blessed. Oh, you are favored. Oh, the Lord will do this for you. It's good. It's good. But it's, it's time we, we draw people closer to God. To understand the dangers of hell. Understand the dangers of hell. Heaven is real. If Jesus come now, 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 now. Where will you find yourself? Tell him you are sorry. Tell him you are sorry. Inside church, you see mileys and gossip. Inside church, you see backbiting. Inside the church, you see people harboring hatred, wickedness in the hearts of people towards their brethren. Are you a Christian? And you are expecting a divine visitation? Set too late with God today. Set too late. Settle it with God. Even if it will mean to, you won't give it to mean you, you crying, rolling on the floor. Tell God you are sorry. Tell him you are sorry. They should be able to understand. People outside, people in the world should know the difference between you and a non believer. There must be a clear difference between you and an unbeliever. One who don't know Christ. One who has not identified with Jesus. Among all of you standing here with me, if you have not given your life to Jesus, please, I will do that before I pray for all of you. Raise up your hand. I will not drop this mic until I lead you to Christ formally. You are going to confess Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. We are saying, Lord, we need divine visitation, but we don't want anything to hinder it. Just lift up your hands. Father, say this after me, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. I want to see your hand up, please. Raise it up, raise it up, raise it up. Raise it up. You are saying, Lord, I want to surrender to you. Save my soul. Raise it up. I want, your, I want to see your hand in the head. Raise it up. God bless you. God bless you. Father, thank you. Just say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. And my personal savior lord i am sorry forgive me my sins from today i want to serve you i want to follow you forward ever backward never in jesus name father thank you for the lives of your sons and your daughters here today we ask so god that you sh i ask lord i show them mercy show them your mercy that by your mercy their doors will be open that by your mercy, they will receive a divine visitation. As they are living here today, Lord, by this encounter, oh God, let strange manifestations of the power of God rest upon their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. The last thing I should say to somebody, as you step out of this place, you are getting a pleasant surprise. You are getting a pleasant surprise. Oh God, thank you. Your word says in Psalm 102 verse 13. He said, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the, the time, the time, the set time. The time is here. The time is come. The time is now. For every man and every woman under the sound of my voice. Lord favor them I don't know what you are believing God for but as this unction comes on you lift up your two hands the power of the Holy Ghost to favor you the power of the Holy Ghost to change your story the Lord is saying to me there are some persons in this place you've been, you've been carrying this, uh, uh, I mean, particular sickness for a very long time. This is the time for your healing. 
This is the time for your healing. Receive your healing wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. I speak healing into your body. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lord for every woman and every man that is ready. Let the favor of God come upon you right now. Let the favor of God rest upon you right now. The same favor I and my husband enjoy. I transfer. Lift up your hands. Lift up your two hands. I transfer. Ushers, ushers, help me, help me. Masatayarabotonalapa. I transfer, I transfer, I transfer. For every hungry heart. For every hungry heart. For every hungry heart. That favor we enjoy. I transfer. I transfer. I transfer. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Now, 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 now. Now, in the name of Jesus. Kabaso reprante. Girololo shilabarabadash. By the favor of God. By the favor of God. Even if it appears like you have been struggling. As the favor of God comes on you today. The Holy Ghost is showing me just five persons in this place. Five persons in this place. Unusual favor. Unusual favor. He said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. The time, the time to favor her, the time to favor him. Lord, where is that man? Where is that woman? That will be returning to this place to testify by the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus as you go back to your seat. You can do it better than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've taken so much time. But I know somebody is blessed today. I said I know somebody is blessed today. I know somebody is blessed today. In Jesus' name.